Hello, hello, Mordimers here and welcome back to the Speed Chess Championship 2020, the match between Magnus Carlsen and Vladislav Artemiev. Uh, Carlsen in this game is going to play as white, Artemiev as black and I choose this game for the reason of the new opening I haven't seen and I was not aware uh, before and it's very interesting. So without further ado, let's see what happened on the board. Uh, we have e4 played by Magnus Carlsen, we have c5, knight f3, and now the move I was not aware that it's possible to play is a6 and this is O'Kelly variation now O'Kelly uh, was a grandmaster Belgian grandmaster and what we know about him he was quite a strong player and he took the lessons from Akiba Rubinstein he was lucky enough to live in Belgium uh, at that time he was born in Belgium so of course and Akiba Rubinstein after the Second World War and during the Second World War was living in uh, Belgium so he was was lucky actually to take the uh, lessons from uh, Master Akiba Rubinstein. Even Akiba was, you know, ended his career already. Now, what is the idea? The idea is that a6 actually take under control b5 square. Why is this important? First thing first, what is good in this for black is possibility of playing b5 and bring the bishop to the b7 on this diagonal. One of the ideas um, of the Sicilian defense. Now, now another, uh, the second reason is if white doesn't know what to do, black gonna get a very, very uh, solid position. So for example, if white just say, okay, this is not good move, I go for my open Sicilian and we have d4, c takes on d4, knight takes on d4, knight f6, knight c3, and then we can have e5. So it looks like Sveshnikov, but without the knight on the f6, but with this a6 move. So what is the difference? The knight cannot jump to the b5 huge difference huge difference because now if the knight retreat then we're gonna have bishop before and it's very very attractive now this pawn is under attack uh the defender is pinned so you have to play something like bishop d3 but then black gonna have very early d5 very comfortable game now uh it takes on d5 knight d5 let's say bishop d2 and after exchanging everything bishop d6 and black stands slightly better there are complex Completely no problem with developments uh, and so on. Also, white have these ugly pawns on the on the C file. So that is the idea. But there is the some problem here, and some of the players started to play a C3 and C4. Uh, and this actually maybe it's not the refutation, but white actually doing pretty good because this A6 move doesn't support B5 anymore, especially after C4. And this is what Magnus Carlsen played. Uh, so we have Marozzi. Bind. This is, of course, Marozzi bind in the O'Kelly variation. So uh, now we have knight c6, we have d4. So now we have a kind of open Sicilian. C takes on d4, knight takes on d4, and now e5. Uh, but of course, the knight cannot go to b5. But another idea here is uh, after e5, e5 is called Geller line. This knight has to go somewhere and can go actually to f5. And this knight again can be very nasty jumping to the d6. Also from b5, that was the option to uh, jump to e6. Uh, but now, of course, from f5, this is also possible. This is why Artemiev went for d6. Uh, and now we have knight c3. We also have g6 kicking the knight, knight e3. We have bishop h6 now. Uh, and this was played a couple of times by Artemiev last year. So definitely every super grandmaster uh, who wanted to face Artemiev uh, definitely check the database, what he was playing and was aware that this is one of the variations that he can play potentially. Of course, it's not the great, but it can work, you know, as the as the weapon, as the surprise uh, in many games, especially if white doesn't know what to what to do. But just remember against O'Kelly you go for the for the Marozzi bind and you can be uh, you should be fine but if you want to risk with the black pieces that your opponent doesn't know you really can get the great um, position now Artemiev in 2019 played at least two games maybe more but I am aware of two games one was played against uh, Le Quang Liem and Le Quang Liem is a pretty dangerous opponent from Vietnam 
and he played in that game knight e to d5 uh, and after exchanging the the bishops we have rook c1 knight g to e7 and uh, black doesn't actually care about knight f6 because the king actually is heading to uh, to g7 however here we don't have knight e to d5 but we have bishop d3 by magnus carlsen now we have knight g to e7 so the same idea and now we have h4 h4 move was played by wesley so in also in 2019 but this game against artemiev ended with a draw uh, we have king f8 so king is heading to the g7 we have h5 we have king g7 and wesley so went for the bishop d2 uh, and it was a draw but here Magnus Carlsen went for knight e to d5 immediately uh, and now we have bishop c1 we have queen c1 threatening already take on g6 and jumping with the queen to h6 so this is why we have h6 now the rook is protecting the, the h6 we have h takes on g6 f takes on g6 and now white have this open file for the rook so it looks pretty uncomfortable for black we have queen e3 now preparing to castle we have knight d4 very nice outpost for the for the knight so one of the drawbacks of the marozzi bind is the hole uh, in d4 so the knight always should should find the way actually uh, to jump to d4 it's possible we have the castle on the queen side and now knight d5 uh, e takes on d5 opening actually diagonal uh, again on the position of the king uh, and now what black want to do is develop the bishop the light square bishop to b5 how to do that uh, actually black should go with the knight to, to f5 so if the bishop takes of course um, black have no problems in this position this bishop would have very comfortable attack on the uh, on this diagonal on the position of the king so probably something like queen e4 threatening already g4 maybe with some attacks on the on the g6 but then black have very important queen f6 move and now what is the difference so for example king b1 then knight d4 can be played and also black in the next move want to play this bishop f5 move so queen e3 and then after bishop f5 uh, probably exchanging ju just exchanging the bishops uh, and it's still very tricky the point is that there is no move like f4 which was played in the game by magnus carlsen because after f4 uh, black can simply take uh, with the pawn and now the queen defends the the knight that is the first thing and this pawn also cannot be taken because um, the, the queen would have to go to f2 and if the pawn is taken then of course we would have this very beautiful discovered attack uh, on the queen with the check and losing the game so as i said bishop f5 would have to be played and something like queen f5 and again this is very tricky you cannot move the king because you're gonna get checkmated this way if you move the king to the to the corner you're gonna get the smothered mate and so on so you would have to play something like rook d3 and everything is fine with the black's position and this can be played however we have bishop f5 immediately and it's not that great because now f4 is possible and if the pawn is taken then of course the the knight is hanging so that's the problem this is why we have bishop d3 with check and here magnus carlsen didn't take the bishop uh, but rather play f takes on e5 and now his knight and the bishop is under attack so uh, what to play if black actually try to exchange the queens which could be the best move in the position but it's still not enough because after queen g5 uh, queen g5 h take on g5 and exchanging the rooks then we're gonna have rook d3 the knight is still under attack d takes on e5 and now c5 and white gonna have very beautiful protected passed pawn and uh, a really great advantage in the game with just a little pieces so that shouldn't be a problem for white actually to win this is why we have knight f5 with the attack on the queen so queen d3 and now d takes on e5 again there is the problem white gonna have um this passed pawn protected passed pawn so we have uh, knight e4 first and now rook c8 threatening already b4 and winning the pawn on the on the c4 this is why we have king b1 avoiding that and now how you gonna continue how you gonna stop that pawn you could potentially go for the for the knight d6 but then you have c5 exchanging 
queen e4, you even win this pawn, uh, but then queen e5, queen f6, and it looks like actually black stands better here, uh, even this pawn is very annoying, but it should fall, but not really, because the h file is open, so for example, after queen e3, the rook is under attack, you cannot uh, go for the, for the king to c8 and bring the rook, for example, to c2 and deliver the checkmate, because your h6 pawn is hanging, and also now your rook is under attack. If you move the rook, for example, rook c7, h5, and then uh, bring the rook to the c file, it's all too slow, because white gonna push the pawn, so d6, rook c6, now d7, and the pawn is already very dangerous, so you even cannot uh, move the rook to c8, you have to play something like h5, uh, and then rook h to f1, your queen is under attack, queen d8, now you're gonna have queen e5 with the check, and what you're gonna play next? Uh, rook f6, and the simplest way to win now is of course rook f6, and after exchanging everything, uh, you're gonna just promote and win with the extra rook. So knight d6 is too passive and doesn't give any, any chances to black, this is why we have knight d4, more active move, and now rook h to f1 anyway. We have b5 now attacking, undermining the pawn, and now we have queen g3. And now the pawn on c4 is lost, but there is no time actually to take it, because now this pawn is under attack, so that is the problem, Magnus find a yet another target, so we have rook e8 defending, but now rook f6 threatening the checkmate in couple of moves, so we have g5, uh, actually what black could try to play here is queen f6, but it's not enough, after knight f6, king f6, uh, queen h4, let's say, king g7, defend that pawn, uh, there is again Again, this d6 move and now d7 is coming, uh, if you move this rook you're gonna get the, the queen to the e7, so you have to move this rook, uh, but then you're gonna have c5 and uh, white gonna have the support, two connected passed pawns, uh, it should be enough actually to win for white. Uh, so we have g5 now, but already asking, okay, maybe the knight gonna gonna jump to g5, uh, and that's gonna be attacked by the by the queen, of course, now it's not possible, because the rook is also under attack, and the knight is the defender of the rook, so first we have queen h3, threatening, uh, taking on h6, we have rook h8, defending, so the queen already threatens to take this pawn, then to this pawn, and, and so on, and black just defending, doesn't have even time to do anything, and now we have rook d to f1, defending uh, the rook also threatening rook f7, this is why we have rook c7 by Artemiev, and now d6, attacking the rook, and here instead of moving the rook, first Artemiev went for queen a8, very sneaky, because now he wants to actually uh, win the knight with the tempo, uh, but we have queen g4 simply defending the, the knight, so we have rook a7 moving the, the, the rook from the c7 because it was attacked by the pawn, and after knight g5 Vladislav Artemiev resign, and he resigned because if he takes the, the knight, of course he's gonna get checkmated in two moves, so it doesn't work, and if he want to prolong the game a little bit further, rook g8, and after knight e6, double check, king h8, uh, simply rook h6 with check, uh, rook h7, and that would be the checkmate. So it's impossible to actually save the game, so after knight g5, he just resigned. And I would like to show you uh, all the quarterfinals, because we already know uh, what just happened. So as you see, Magnus Carlsen won 13.5 to 9.5 against uh, Vladislav Artemiev, Maxim Vash Michel Lagraf won against Levon Aronian just two days ago, Wesley So already a couple of weeks ago won against Jan Krzysztof Duda, and also yesterday Hikaru Nakamura won uh, decisively against Vladimir Fyodosyev, however, the, I think the best move of the tournament happened uh, in, in their game, so I would like to show you also uh, the, the game, one of the games of Hikaru against Vladimir, uh, but very unexpected and very beautiful queen sacrifice, so definitely I will show you as a next on my channel, so if you don't want to miss that, press subscribe, smash the bell button, thanks for watching and see you in the next one!